Welcome. Yes, afternoon, Godfrey. Thanks yeah. for having me. You can see I'm trying to catch my breath. Mm. Let's talk about what you find in this report in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, so look, I mean, um, NACAM, the abbreviation for the long words that you just gave out, we we'll are. NACAM from <laughs> here. <laughs> we, we, the uh, Auto Component Manufacturers Industry Association. The or parts of the things that uh, make up cars. Basically. The, the real value adding part of a vehicle and why we have a manufacturing economy in South Africa or, or auto uh, industry in South Africa. So, so my uh, association uh, represents um, probably close on 150 manufacturers who supply original components into the assembly plants uh, based, based across South Africa. Right. Um, this stu particular study that you're referring to is something that we've been doing in partnership with uh, a specialist ben benchmarking um, consultancy called yeah. BNM Analysts. Yeah. Uh, second iteration that we've, we've done with them, uh, effectively looking at what the health of the South African uh, auto supplier base is like yeah. relative to global benchmarks. Yeah, and what do you find? Um, uh, and uh, you mean th th uh, th 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 there's so many different aspects that we can talk about, but yeah. I think uh, high level South African supplier industry placed at the cusp of significant growth uh, needs to do a few things to unlock that growth. Right. Very important we continue to be globally competitive, yeah. uh, do what we need to do to ensure productivity. Uh, interesting to know that in South Africa, you've got uh, seven vehicle manufacturers and their suppliers yeah. who don't compete with each other in South Africa. You're competing on a global platform. Right. So you have to be you, you really got you, you got to be you running up your game. Yeah, you got to be running as fast, if not faster, than the guys in Thailand and Mexico and all of these places. Yeah. And your study, what did it find in terms of the health of the industry and its ability to be able to take on the opportunity that you're talking about? That's are you saying a little? on the horizon, horizon? Yeah, look, I think um, the interesting thing for us is that uh, importantly from a cost perspective, yeah. our domestic suppliers doing well shop floor level. Um, from the wider assembly perspective, there's been a slight slowdown in terms of global growth of production. Okay. So the African assembly uh, bucked the trend and in the past year, uh, about 1.4% growth of vehicle assembled. Okay. Uh, growth for South African suppliers of that at about 3.4%. Okay. So happening, uh, positive global conditions, not the best at the moment. You are aware of some of the trade issues and yeah. all of that impacted on the global production environment. Yeah. Um, but in a space that, that I, I think we, we can build from. Talk a little bit about uh, that uh, assembly uh, uh, segment of the market. And yeah. you're saying there's been very little growth. I, I think a little understandable given the context of the South African economy. Yeah. But I thought Africa was growing faster. And you guys, this is your opportunity, right? Yeah, so look, an interesting one. The African, African discussion is very important. So global growth production down. South Africa up by 1.4%. Yeah. Just under 600,000 vehicles produced in South Africa last year. Uh -huh. Africa remains a key but not the biggest market. And I think as stakeholders, something that we're busy with is trying to help and assist industrialization on the African continent. Yes. Uh, we are part, South Africa's part of uh, a very important attempt with three or four uh, fairly of the, the, the larger African markets to develop an autos yeah. industrialization. I think package. Nigeria is one of yeah, them. Nigeria is one of them, Kenya, Ghana, uh, possibly looking at Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, if we get that right, then you start solving and unlocking the growth potential for vehicles produced in South Africa, produced yeah. in the neighboring countries, yes. component production, all of the good things you want from industrial. What does it mean for people like you though? Because now I'm thinking, wouldn't then the original equipment manufacturers deal directly with those markets rather than come through you, through you guys here? Look, How I think the, 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 the opportunity is for our South Africa, and, and remember the South African component manufacturers are not all South African owned. They're all part of big multinationals yes, as yes, well. Yes, that's exactly my so, point. So if you've got the, the local OEMs setting up sister plants in these countries, yeah. the guys who are already supplying that type of assembly here yeah. are well placed to invest, partner, ah, all of those you're things. You're part of the global part, part of the Yeah, you're part of the global uh, growth kind of uh, right. situation when you unlock a market. Yeah. The biggest challenge with Africa is that You've got to give these countries an incentive to stop 
buying the two, three-year-old grain imports that you from find Japan. in Japan. From Japan. Wherever you find it from. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> because it's, it's interesting when you travel around the African continent. For instance, you go to Egypt, the kind of cars that you see there, and then you fly a few kilometers, well, a few hundred kilometers, you go into Morocco, for instance, where they don't allow that kind of thing, and you see a different car complexion. Move further down into Nigeria, it's uh, what you will see. Okay. I wanted to come back to the issue of productivity. Mm -hmm. You raised it. What did you find? Because that's a thorny issue, isn't it? I mean, we are all aware of the strikes that take place all the time, and we all are aware about the industry complaints. I think a lot of the time, the productivity is not increasing, and yet people are depend depend demanding higher salaries. So it's an interesting one, and this year is a year that uh, the South African autos industry goes into its three-year uh, negotiation period. And so you're going to be careful with what you say. No, look, I mean, bes <laughs> be besides that, I, I think want it's to know what you found. It, yeah, it's an important discussion. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the positive. I think the positive is, uh, out of this report, you'll see that absenteeism, absenteeism rates in South Africa, on, yeah. in South African factories, are yeah. about the best in terms of global benchmarks. So, so we do better than, than uh, the, the, the less developed countries, better than the developed countries. Yeah. However, we've still got um, higher uh, labor costs than you would find in some of our competing economies. Oh, I thought uh, South Africans were the least paid. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about your industry, but <laughs> in the autos industry, it is a fairly advanced manufacturing space, highly skilled. Um, so, you know, the, the, the rates of pay in the South African auto sector are about um, the, the upper end in, in, in the manufacturing space. So you'd say that's among some of the key challenges that the industry... The, the it's a challenge, but there's also other ways of looking at it and, and uh, something that we ourselves as yeah. component manufacturers have to look at and say, yeah. have we kept pace with um, global investment norms? Mm. Are we spending what we should be spending on skills development? Yeah. Technology and skills are a key, key mix or key part of the mix in the overall productivity analysis. Absolutely. So uh, I think our encouragement to, to, to members and, and the wider component manufacturing space is to use yeah. things like investment, uh, spend on skills yeah. to, to boost productivity as well. Absolutely. Let's not get stuck in the, in the, the wage debate. Right. That's, that's got its own space. It's part of it. It's, 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 it's part and parcel of uh, the industry and the challenges that it faces. Time is not our friend. I have to end the discussion. But I wanted to talk to you more a little bit, in fact, about the money that's being spent by the industry on skills development. And I also wanted to talk to you a little more about uh, the government support, because that's key, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's kick off with the government quickly, support. Quickly. It is by far the biggest reason why we produce vehicles and exactly. components in South Africa. Yeah. What we've got to always be doing is thinking, in any average vehicle coming out of South Africa, how much of that we want to be fully sourced out of South Africa? Yes. At the moment, we're sitting at about localization rates, roughly 38%. 38. 38%, long-term target, let's get to 60%. We maximize the economic development opportunity. 100%. Uh, it, it's, it's really important. That's, that's where our, our key competitor markets are. They, they're close to the 60% localization levels you then eliminate a lot of, lot of risk, uh, exchange risk, logistics risk. Yeah. Um, all of that you get to deal with and at the same time creating opportunities for new entrants, uh, transformation, um, all, of, all of the things that our economy needs to, to, to really give us a growth spurt. Absolutely. Renai, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. That's uh, Renai Mothila, who is the Executive Director at NACA.